So here we have a parallelogram. Let's add in the two diagonals that join opposite corners. In this video, we're going to be examining the diagonals of parallelograms to see why the following statement, parallelogram diagonals bisect each other, is true. First of all, let's give each diagonal a separate label. We'll call the top left to bottom right PQ, and we'll call the diagonal which goes from bottom left to top right RS. In mathematics, the word bisect means to divide something into two equal parts. So by the statement parallelogram diagonals bisect each other, we mean that each of these lines divides the other into two equal parts. So the diagonal RS divides the diagonal PQ into two equal parts. Let's put an indicator in for that. But because both diagonals bisect each other, it means that the diagonal PQ bisects the diagonal RS Let's put an indicator for that also. So the purpose of the video is to show that with the line PQ, the left-hand side of the line is equivalent in length to the right-hand side of the line. And for the diagonal RS, the length of the left-hand side of the line is equivalent to the length of the right-hand side of the line. We're going to achieve this by finding some of the angles in the parallelogram around the diagonal lines. So let's clear these indicators first of all. Let's make the labels a little bit smaller so they're not obscuring our view. Let's focus on the top and bottom parallel lines and the diagonal PQ. I'll highlight them so that they stand out. The diagonal PQ intersects the parallel lines, creating this Z shape. And if you know your alternate angles, you should recognize that the angles in the corners of the Z shape are alternate and therefore are equivalent to each other. So let's mark the angles and we'll label them with a value A. Now, instead of focusing on the diagonal PQ, we'll focus on the diagonal RS while still focusing on the top and the bottom parallel lines. So I'll highlight that so it stands out. Again, the diagonal intersects the two parallel lines. This time it's the diagonal RS. This creates another Z shape, this time facing the opposite way, but you should still recognize that in the corners of the Z shape, we have alternate angles which are equivalent. So let's mark those angles and let's give those angles a value of B. Now let's remove the highlight and take a closer look. We've created two triangles with two equivalent angles A and B. Top triangle has the angle A and B and the bottom triangle has the angles A and B. Let's mark the last angle for each triangle. These two angles are at the point where the two diagonals intersect. Opposite angles on an intersection have the same value. So these angles are equal to each other. Let's give them the value C. Now, using these two triangles, we can show that the diagonal PQ is bisected by the diagonal RS and that the diagonal RS is bisected by the diagonal PQ. Now you may have noticed that these two triangles appear to be similar. Top angles of the triangles have the value C. The left side of the triangle, of this triangle, has the value B. This is upside down, so this side is the left side and that has the value B. And the right side of each triangle has the value A. So the corresponding angles of these two triangles have the same value. And that means that the triangles are similar. They may even be congruent, that is exactly the same size, because the base of the triangles are exactly the same length, just the length of the top and bottom of the parallelogram. And if that were true, because the diagonals are made up of the sides of the triangles, and the sides of the triangles are the same length, that would mean, for example, with the line RS, that this length is the same as this length, and that would prove that PQ divides the diagonal equally. I don't want to do any guesswork though. We don't want to assume that these two triangles are exactly the same size, but there is another way to show that the diagonals are divided into two equal parts using these triangles. Let's start by considering the fact that the bases are exactly the same size. What I'm going to do is move a copy of the bottom triangle and place it on top of the upper parts of the parallelogram. 
Now, because the bases of these two triangles were exactly the same length, by moving this one up and placing the bases exactly on top of each other so that they line up, what we've essentially done is create the hypotenuse of a new quadrilateral. You can see the new quadrilateral here where the bases of the triangles are the hypotenuse. Now, if for a moment we focus just on this new quadrilateral, you should see that opposite angles in this quadrilateral are equal because the value of this angle is C and the value of the opposite angle is C. But if we look on the left side, we have an angle that's made up of two values A and B, but the opposite angle, the one on the right hand side, is also made up of the value A plus B. So for this quadrilateral, opposite angle pairs have the same value. And the definition of a quadrilateral that has opposite pairs that are of equal value is a parallelogram. So we have a parallelogram because the opposite angles have the same value. Hopefully you know that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are of equal length. Let's give them labels. I'll label the longer edges with an X and I'll label the short edges with the value Y. And now that we have the values of the opposite edges of the new quadrilateral, let's move this triangle back into its original position. And now that we have everything back in place, let's remove the angle markings so we can see more clearly what's going on. So now you should be able to see that the diagonal PQ is divided into two equal parts of length Y and the diagonal RS is divided into two equal parts of length X. So the diagonal PQ bisects the diagonal RS and the diagonal RS bisects the diagonal PQ and there's how we know that the parallelogram diagonals bisect each other. Thanks for watching.